As design engineers, we often find ourselves uh, trying to uh, quantify our design projects and the various elements that we design when it comes to civil works. And of course, estimating these, the overall cost of the project will require you to quantify each and every individual um, element or component or design element that you have in your project. Uh, so, for example, suppose this is a, on my screen here, this is a simple project uh, that I've been working on, that I worked on uh, previously. And um, suppose now I want to quantify everything, every detail that is in this project. Uh, traditionally, this takes us to the traditional methods that most civil 3D users are conversant with. And number one, it is, of course, um, the corridor earthwork volume tools, uh, which we use for quantifying the amount of earthworks. And it's literally a comparison between the design profile or the design surface versus the existing ground surface. So just trying to see what is the difference between these two surfaces. And therefore, you can be able to get the volume of your earthwork. The second one is, of course, the mouse hole diagrams, which I suppose not very popular for many people. And these are just the two obvious methods. But today I want to introduce um, a little bit more efficient, more accurate uh, method that is using the QTO, that is Quantity Takeoff Manager. And what is this Quantity Takeoff Manager? It, it is um, it's an inbuilt uh, functionality or tool in Civil 3D that helps designers and engineers do these things. The first one is you can be able to load pay items into your project. And of course, when you're talking about pay items, it's a cost items. Uh, for example, when you're talking about this line represent the road marking that I will have on the, my main highway. So this is a pay item for that matter. If I wanted to know the road marking for my walkways at this point and the pedestrian crossings, then that's a pay item. If I wanted to know the site clearance for this parcel of land right here, then that is a pay item. If you look closely at my project, you'll be able to see that at the median, I will be having some, let me call them ornamental trees. And therefore, I would like to know how many seedlings will I require to do this work right here. The second thing would be about getting the surface area for the paving blocks that I'm going to use for my sidewalk at this specific point over and above the asphalt quantities that I will require to do surfacing for these entire sections. So that is what pay items are. And of course, we can be able to automate this process. And after identifying the pay items, we have templates that we can use to load these pay items. And I will be taking you shortly to that. And the second thing that you'll be able to do is to assign those pay items to civil 3D objects. And in this case, we are talking about corridors, surfaces, street lights, road furniture, and all of these elements. So, so the sec last thing that you'll be able to do is to extract. Uh, I want you to follow keenly. The first thing is we, we load the pay items using our templates. The second thing is we'll be able to assign those pay items to our design elements or objects. And then after that, we can be able to extract, tabulate, and export those quantities into reports or spreadsheets that we can be able to use for cost estimation. It is important to know that this is an inbuilt um, a tool that we can be able to explore. Let us get into the practical bit of it. Um, in the home ribbon, I am using Civil 3D 2025. Um, the interface is a little bit similar to that uh, in 2023, 2024 a little different from uh, the other older versions, but still the functionality is still there. And therefore, this is the home ribbon. Uh, we can go to analyze ribbon and analyze ribbon. We go to the view volume and materials uh, panel. 
And I know this is where you're very conversant with volume dashboard, grading volumes, volume reports, total volume tables. But next to it, we have the QTO, that's the quantity takeoff uh, tool. And in this one, I want us to click the QTO manager. And in the QTO manager, once you open it, we'll have the dialog box of the QTO manager itself. And for example, you can see there are pay items that are already loaded in this project. And for example, they have been categorized. For this one, we can turn off the categorization. This is the toggle option. And the, thing, the first thing you see, there is a number, and this is the pay item ID. So each and every pay item has an identity so that we don't want confusion here. Uh, the second one is the description what does this pay item stand for and then after that we have the units so what is the unit of measurement uh, for this specific pay item so for example let's say the soil erosion control um, okay let me look at uh, site clearance here so this is clearing you can see the unit type here is acre and then also we have the option to impute a formula so this is when we want to do conversions so the second thing that I want you to note is when we uh, turn on the categorization, it means these pay items have been divided uh, in the context of, for example, let's say it's um, bill items in a BOQ. So there's earthworks, you can see the structural element or abutments, the aggregates, there is bridge construction, materials, and all of these elements. So this makes it easy for us to be able to interact uh, with the pay item template that we have or the pay item files there. So we normally have the pay item file itself and then there's the categorization file. And I know the obvious question that you have in mind is where are these pay items? Where can I get them? Where can I get these templates? And then we can be able to load. So what you do is there is the open um, file icon here. And we want to open the file um, that we have right there, QTO manager. And then we can go to open. I want to show you where this file is stored in your computer. Remember, this comes uh, with uh, the installation. When you're installing uh, your files or your civil 3D, you have this data already there. There is the pay item file format. And then uh, in this case, of course, it's in CSV. And then we go to pay item file location. And in the pay item location, let's get to see where it's stored. You can see it's uh, local disk C for the path. And you can be able to easily get it. And this is where we have the get started file. So once you go to this get started file, that is when now you open it and you can be able to load it right here in your project. So that is how you get it. Uh, for example, if you want to get the same file in your, uh, for example, in your computer, uh, it is in local disk. Uh, uh, let me go right there now. This computer, local disk C, and then it's in uh, program data, Autodesk. And then after that, you will look for out to the Civil 3D 2025. Remember now that will change according to the version you have. ENU. And then in that, we'll get to data. And then under data, we can be able to see pay item data. And then we have getting started. And you can be able to see the getting started file is right here. So you can actually be able to open it. And once you open it, this is the second thing that we're going to be doing. And now create our own template that has the pay items that are relevant to our project. Uh, for this case, let me just expand this. Um, we have the pay item ID. So these IDs are identifiers for each pay item. So remember, you can copy some from this one. And then after that, we have the description. Remember, these end lines must be as they are here. So you just copy these ones, uh, the adding spare item description and unit. These are just for information purposes. So you don't need them when you're creating your own um, template. 
and then after that these are the item descriptions so in the item descriptions you don't necessarily need all of these uh, this is just um i can call it a generic one uh, just to show you what you need to have in the formatting so what you need to do is for example you can be able to copy this uh, let me just create a new uh, file or it and i'll first copy this uh, the, the editing and then after that i can be able to paste it right there so this is very important i'll go back to my design and i will identify the specific items that i want to load so how do i create those ones i'll switch over to this section and then after copying that uh, for example i can use Control f for find um this list is very 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 comprehensive uh so let's say for example even i want to have backfill here well, let me work with what is here so i can be able to copy it with the id uh, the description and the unit and once i do that then i can be able to paste it on my uh on my new template right there and then after that i can be able to copy a few um, other items for the interest of time uh, let's say i'm removing buildings so i want to see that removal from work and all of this information i can copy that and then once i copy it i can be able to paste it right there so now already we have um, the template with us and now I, we need to save it so you go to file and then save us in saving the file it is important to note that you need to create you can be able to save it in the data or in the programs program data files uh, you can actually be able to create even a separate um, a separate uh, folder where you would want to store it so anywhere that you want to store and then you're naming it as my template so let me call it engineer james template and in this template let me do that try right there and then in the excel this one is csv utf 8 comma delimited that is the file type and you can see it's the same as the get started and then you can be able to save that file so once you save it right there you can close all of them uh, so I don't want to save anything to that I go back to civil 3d and then I'll go to QTO manager and then I go to this one uh, to opening uh, the pay items and in the pay items I can go to the file and in the file you can see the engineer James template is right there and then I can be able to load it at my own time so once I load that, uh, you can see this is the one that is calling itself and categorize here. And then I'll show you how you can be able to unload and separate them in case you have a change in whatever you want to do. So cheers. That's how you get to work or create your own templates. That's how you get to see where the template is, create your own template, and then get to load it. In the next video, we're going to be covering how can you now be able to use uh, or can you be able to assign uh, pay items, load these pay items according to the elements that you want to measure here in the design. So cheers, see you around and wait for the next video.